I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar, Minds4 and Cloud Native Ecosystem. I'm Christian Jans, Cloud Consultant at Level 25 and a CNCF Ambassador. I'll be moderating today's webinar and I would like to welcome our presenters today, which is Howard Huang and um, Yidong Liu, both Community Manager and Open Source Engineers at Huawei. Please bear with me if that was a little incorrect in pronunciation and correct me later. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a QA button at the bottom of your screen, so right below the presentation. Please feel free to drop your questions in there and we will get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat of questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all and your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io forward slash webinars. With that, I'll head it over to Howard and Yedong to kick off today's presentation. Thank you very much and uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, Thank you very much for uh, attending uh, today's webinar. Uh, this is our first time doing CNCF webinar. Uh, hopefully uh, we're doing it in the right way. Uh, so today's topic is about Mindspore, uh, a newly open source deep learning framework and how we uh, adopt it in the cloud native ecosystem. Um, I'm Howard Huang from Huawei. I am an open source manager and my colleague here is Ye Dong Liu, uh, he's the author of uh, the MS operator, uh, which is the um, kind of the MySQL Qflow operator, uh, which he will give a deep dive later in the talk. Okay, so basically we will have a three part of the talk. Uh, I'll be giving a high level introduction of MySQL, and then Ye Dong will walk you through how we like deploy um, Manspore on Kubernetes with Kubeflow and then uh, there will be a short demo. Okay, um, Manspore is a new open source deep learning uh, framework. So think about uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, you know, MXNet. Um, so Manspore is a new addition uh, to the uh, a slew of uh, open source deep learning frameworks. So uh, we open sourced it uh, Saturday last week. So it's fresh out of the oven. Uh, Mindspore is designed for uh, developer or users to uh, easily use for mobile edge and cloud scenarios. Uh, hopefully we can provide with very fun, uh, friendly design uh, for developer to uh, to use and also um, efficient execution uh, for data scientists. And uh, Mindspore is uh, highly optimized for uh, Huawei's Ascend AI processor, um, uh, but we also support like uh, general hardware like CPU and GPUs. Um, so you can, uh, visit our uh, official website uh, here's and uh, we provide both Chinese and English version of of the website um, the main um, repo we hosted on Giti uh, sort of like a, a Chinese version of github but we also provide a mirror uh, at github for those who are uh, more familiar with GitHub, and the PR and issues are open uh, for uh, for GitHub, so uh, you can uh, very easily join the discussion. Okay, this is the uh, overview of the architecture uh, for Mindspore. So uh, very similar to most of the mainstream uh, deep learning frameworks, uh, Mindspore has a Python written uh, front end. Uh, so like data scientists could write a machine learning 
uh, deep learning models uh, in Python uh, quickly and easily. And then we have a C++ backed uh, implementation of uh, several key features. Um, and we also have another module called the uh, Graph Engine. So Graph Engine is sort of like the uh, backend engine for for Mindspore. Uh, it provides many of the like the low-level optimization, uh, pipeline parallel, uh, on-device execution. For example, you can actually offload an entire graph uh, through Graph Engine onto a send AI processor, so you can gain uh, the maximum performance uh, out of it. Um, and then you, uh, we have several uh, like backend runtime targeting different um, like type of uh, hardware. Um, so we have for general computing, like for CPU, uh, for GPU, uh, for Ascend uh, 310, which mostly used for uh, edge computing. Uh, Ascend 910 uh, for large scale cloud computing and uh, for mobile. Uh, Android and iOS. Uh, so uh, several like key features that uh, Mindspore uh, brings to the world. Um, the first one is auto differentiation. Uh, auto differentiation is not a new thing uh, per se, uh, but Mindspore offers uh, source code based uh, auto differentiation. So for those of you who are familiar with uh, compilation uh, tech, uh, technologies, so uh, source to source uh, compilation uh, optimization uh, is very useful for uh, uh, scenarios like uh, when you want to uh, exploit uh, like the maximum performance of certain hardware. Uh, for example, there's a uh, there's another open source project called Tornado VM from the University of Manchester uh, Beehive Lab. Uh, so they, uh, Tornado VM is uh, also providing a source to source uh, compilation optimization, but for Java uh, to be run on top of heterogeneous uh, computing hardware. Uh, so uh, that is to say from the Java source code uh, to be compiled uh, to open CLC code. So for Mindspore, uh, it mostly um, from the front end uh, expression compiled to uh, what the back end uh, could uh, best understood uh, the source code. And also another uh, great feature is uh, for Mindspore, if you writing the model actually you can just add one line and you can switch between a static graph and a dynamic graph. So static graph versus dynamic graph is kind of a uh, um, like forever ongoing uh, a struggle uh, in the deep learning community. Uh, so for production, people usually prefer to static graph and but for like debugging and uh, development, uh, people usually prefer to dynamic graph. So Mindspore kind of uh, could provide the data scientists uh, both way, uh, just uh, add one liner and uh, you can switch between the two modes. Another thing uh, Mindspore brings uh, is uh, the auto uh, parallel. So typically in deep learning, we have uh, data parallelism and model parallelism. So that means when you run like distributed training, you can have uh, you can have either like data distributed uh, across the cluster, or you can also have model uh, be distributed across the cluster. Uh, so uh, sometimes you can have a hybrid. Uh, parallelism to take a, a advantage of both data and model parallelism. Uh, for Mindspore, uh, we support uh, both type of parallelism and also it 
similar to the uh, set, uh, static graph and uh, dynamic graph switch. It's also like one liner change you can add uh, to your uh, even uh, like serialized code. Uh, you can change it to the parallel execution uh, by taking advantage of the uh, Huawei's Ascend uh, AI processor. Uh, so it's pretty amazing. Uh, so Mansport has its own uh, IR defined uh, because as I mentioned, we heavily rely on uh, compilation optimization. Um, so we also have like two other modules open sourced uh, with the core uh, deep learning framework. One is uh, we call the Mind Insight, uh, which is our visualization tool, uh, uh, similar to TensorBoard. And another uh, module uh, we call Mind Armor. Uh, it's uh, like a... Uh, uh, and a virtual attack evaluation tool uh, for your model. So you can like testing the security of your model uh, by using that tool. Okay. Um, so technology aside, we also uh, embraced a open governance model uh, that we learned from uh, CNCF and also Kubernetes. So, um, for example, we have a, a technical steering committee set up uh, with 40 members from uh, uh, various universities, companies, startups, uh, institutions, actually across the globe, uh, from China, uh, Europe, UK, US. And uh, we want to make sure we have, the community have a truly open and global uh, technical governing body. And similar to Kubernetes, we also have six and the working groups uh, set up. So for six, uh, it um, mostly in charge of the specific feature development. Uh, for example, we have the uh, front end uh, expression, uh, compiler, uh, executor, model zoo, uh, and so forth. Uh, so working groups are handling matters that uh, topics across C. For example, we have the documentation and also infrastructure. Um, so we welcome like further SIGs and the working groups uh, establishment if there's any uh, like uh, need, for example, uh, like uh, research working group or security working group. So uh all the uh like uh establishment of the SIGs and working groups will be approved by TIC and uh everything is across uh is uh, will be done uh accordingly to our charter. Um so this uh governance structure actually uh we want to guarantee we have a open development uh procedure. Uh, we also have community partners that uh, not necessarily uh, involved in Mindsport's community governance uh, per se, but could uh, like collaborate uh, in open source. For example, like the DGL lab, which is uh, really good at uh, uh, graph neural networks uh, and open source project from LFAI like Melvis, uh, which is a very a uh, great project uh, providing the uh, vector processing and uh, so we can build a uh, index searching engine, uh, basically. Okay, uh, without further ado, uh, I will be handing over uh, to Ye Dong uh, uh, to talk about how we uh, deploy Monsport on Kubernetes and uh, how we, uh, like, Build uh, Mansport uh, with the cloud native ecosystem. Uh, you don't are you there? Uh, yes. Can okay. you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. 
Uh, hello, uh, uh, I am Yedong Liu from Huawei, and I will introduce something about uh, MySpore and uh, Cloud Native, uh, mainly Kubernetes here. Uh, so, uh, if we take a look at other deep learning frameworks, uh, including TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, MXNet, uh, these frameworks benefit from uh, implementing the TF job or Python job or MXNet job, uh, these custom resource definition or CRDs and using these CRDs to create and manage deep learning jobs in Kubernetes cluster, uh, mainly for distributed training. Um, as Howard mentioned, uh, MindSpore has some highlighted technical features, uh, including uh, automatic differentiation and uh, auto parallel. So if we uh, if MindSpore can also leverage the uh, resource allocation and the management capabilities of Kubernetes, uh, the distributed training is much easier and more controllable to achieve uh, in, container, in container environment. Uh, plus, monitoring the job is also uh, visible through operators. So uh, MS operator is something we want to achieve in a short time. So you can see a plus. Uh, plus uh, MindSpore and MindSpore operator. Uh, MS operator is in MindSpore scope, um, but right now, uh, since MindSpore is still very young, only four days old, so right now we only finished a proof of concept of training a simple uh, MNIST model using CPU in Kubernetes. Uh, hopefully, we can see distributed training on multiple backends, including CPU, GPU, and Huawei Ascent processor in the near future uh, for more demos. Uh, next slide. So I want to talk about something uh, about MySpore and the uh, Kubeflow ecosystem here. Uh, since Kubeflow just announced its major uh, 1.0 release uh, recently with graduation of a set of of core applications, uh, including Kubeflow's UI, uh, Jupyter Notebook, uh, Jupyter Web, uh, Jupyter Notebook controller and web app, uh, TF job, PyTorch job, and uh, KFCTL, and so on. So, uh, Kubeflow is a, uh, in our eyes, a very matured community to cooperate and uh, using their powers uh, together with the MySpot to push both of us forward. So the MySpore community is also driving to collaborate with uh, Kubeflow as well as making the uh, MS operator uh, more complex, well-organized, and all its dependencies and packages up to date. So all these components will make it easy for uh, uh, machine learning engineers and data scientists to use the cloud assets, uh, both public uh, and on-premise for machine learning workloads. So um, MindSpore is looking forward to enable our developers to use Jupyter, which is our, one of our tasks, to develop models. Uh, developers in the future can use uh, Kubeflow tools like uh, Ferry, uh, Kubeflow's Python ADK, uh, SDK to build containers and create Kubernetes resources to train their uh, MindSpore models. Uh, once the training is completed, we can also use the KF serving to create and deploy a server for inferencing uh, so that we can complete the life cycle of the uh, machine learning. Uh, another thing uh, I want to talk about is distributed training. Uh, distributed training is another field that MindSpore will be focusing on. Um, there are two major distributed training strategies nowadays. Uh, one based on parameter servers like the TensorFlow and other based on uh, collective communication primitive such as all reduce. So uh, the MPI operator is already uh, implemented and be used in the Kubeflow community. So MPI operator is one of the core components of Kubeflow, and uh, it is easy to run synchronized or reduced style uh, distributed training on Kubernetes. So uh, MPI operator also provides a CRD for defining a training job on single CPU, GPU, multiple CPU, GPU, or even multi nodes. It also implements a custom controller to manage the CRDs. 
uh, create dependent resources and reconcile the desired states. So if uh, my score together with uh, MPI operator, I think we uh, together with the uh, MPI operators and uh, my scores uh, with multiple backends, including the Huawei Ascent chips, uh, with the high performance Huawei Ascent chips, it is possible that the MySport will bring the distributed training to uh, another new high level. All right, next slides. And this is the uh, MS operator workflow I imagine in the future. So uh, this is a high level set of tasks uh, needed to run the MySport job on Kubeflow. So uh, first we write or we reuse the Python training code and then build the YAML file based on the CRD definition of MS job, uh, describing the uh, training job, the container image, uh, the program or the training file we use, uh, we write, we, we wrote in step one for training uh, execution and uh, setting our parameters. Uh, then find an container or build a Docker container image uh, containing all the code and dependencies. And last one is just send the job YAML file to the cluster for execution with kubectl, uh, with kubectl com uh, command. So out of the box, uh, Kubernetes doesn't understand uh, how distributed uh, MySQL works. Uh, Kubernetes only needs to uh, help understand where the demons for uh, running and uh, how they talk with one another. So um, uh, we can see the general flow of how uh, different parts of Kubeflow work together to get uh, MySport containers working on Kubernetes and coordinating with each other. Okay, next slide. Uh, actually, there are some fun facts about the uh, installing issue. Uh, uh, as we mentioned, the MySport is just open source for four days, so it's only four days. Oh, it's super young. And the most issues we encountered in our uh, open source community is installing or building, uh, because many developers, they want to build from the source, but many fails, they cannot build from the source. Uh, maybe sometimes it's compiling error. Uh, sometimes their environment is not suitable. Sometimes they want to install on Mac, but right now uh, MySQL cannot support just directly built on a Mac, uh, Macintosh. Uh, but we have some alternative uh, solutions. So we prepared MySQL Docker images for users, uh, both CPU version and GPU version. Uh, actually, it turned out that uh, to, this is a great solution uh, to these installing issues. Uh, here, uh, as you can see in the right button, uh, one of our developers, she said uh, it was more comfortable installing from Docker than building from source. This is a translation. Uh, no pain installing, uh, no pain running the demo. Uh, the starting experience is fantastic. I strongly recommend everyone installing MySQL via Docker. So that's the power of uh, Docker and Cloud Native. Okay, next one. Uh, okay, uh, in this demo, I recorded a video of training uh, LUNet with MNIST dataset using MySQL CPU on a single node in a, a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, how can you go to the YouTube? Okay, so... Um... The network uh, condition is not very stable, so you don't uh, record, <laughs> pre-record. Uh, the demo uh, is on YouTube. You can check it out uh, anytime you like. So I just play it. All right, this is my virtual machine. So just doing some version check. They're checking the Docker, the kubectl, and cluster info. All right, we're using the Kubernetes version 1.14.0 and the CD to our uh, source root. All right, these are all the source code and CD to the examples we run today. 
So we store our uh, training data in the MNIST folder and uh, we check our YAML file. It's pretty simple. The image we use is a uh, MySport uh, CPU 0.1.0 alpha, which is the first version of our release. And we will train the uh, learnet.py as our um, script. Okay, we can check our script source code. And this is a very simple uh, Python file for uh, defining a LE net model and uh, setting some parameters like LRs and uh, approaches. Only uh, should be within 200 lines. So this is a months per written model, right? Yes. So for our uh, demo, we set the approach time to approach size to one and only one, just for demonstration. Okay. Uh, let's uh, right now. I think we can start our creating our uh, training job. All right, the pod is created. We can get the status. Now it's container creating. <laughs> Uh, just kidding, it won't take 2,000 years, just uh, should be within just one minute. <laughs> okay, we finished. Uh, we used uh, four minutes to finish our training and get the logs. All right, let's get to the start. Then we can check our accuracy. The accuracy is uh, 96, more than 96%. So that's it. That's, that's, that is how to train a, a mass 4 LE net on Kubernetes cluster. All right, that's a demo. Thank you. OK. Um... So uh, as we mentioned, this is a new open source project and uh, we definitely want um, every developer who's interested in deep learning development uh, to participate. Um, so uh, there's a lot of ways to participate in the community. Uh, so we can check out code. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, our main development will happen on Giti. Uh, Giti also have the English support uh, is very uh, nice and easy but if you like still prefer github uh, you can still uh, use our mirror mirror repo uh, you can submit uh, prs or uh, or issues so uh, we'll have uh, someone uh, pick over the pr which is uh, reviewed and over to Giti uh, for uh, landing um, so, uh, as Yedong just mentioned, uh, you can try uh, experimenting uh, months for uh, using Docker. This is probably by, by far the, uh, the most convenient way uh, we saw. Um, so we prepared, uh, actually with the help with Another developer who uh, we're, uh, we don't know, uh, but to just help uh, answering the issue, uh, providing the build instructions for the uh, CUDA Docker container. So we prepared two version uh, of the CUDA uh, container. And um, so in April for the China region, uh, actually we'll open up uh, the Huawei cloud uh, like the the the, uh, the the Kubernetes service for the ascent backend uh, 
cluster. So, uh, like, that'll be the ascent uh, backend Docker uh, you can uh, experiment with. Uh, so for discussion, we are on Slack. Uh, sorry for the long link, uh, but you can join uh, our discussion on Slack or uh, we strongly advise you to uh, register or uh, subscribe to our mailing list uh, if you got any like questions or uh, other things you want to discuss with the community. Um, yeah, that's it. Just uh, uh, head over to our website and uh, check it out. We have FAQs, we have tutorials, we have APIs, documentations. Um, hopefully, you uh, can provide uh, as many as uh, the answer uh, you'll be looking for. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Great. Thanks, Howard and Jadong, for the great presentation. And um, yeah, time for questions. Um, if you have questions, please do drop them into the Q&A section right in Zoom. Um, and we have one, which is, can you please paste the link to all of these things into the chat? Um, paste all the links, like? Yeah, maybe. I think I don't know if it's for the mailing list, if Samuel, um, if you could be a little bit more or put in what link specifically you're looking for. Uh, the question is just please paste link. Okay. Uh, so the, the slide will be made available, right? So. Um... Okay, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. maybe to answer the question, the slides will be made available so you can just or, look them up online. I can, I can, I can do it now. It will also be in Slack in a minute. Yeah, you can join the conversation. Like a conversation in the Q&A section. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, shoot. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Sounds like that's it. So yeah, thanks again uh, for the great presentation, Howard and Gidong. Um, and that's all we have for today. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. Again, the webinar recording and slides will be online later today. Um, we are looking forward to see you at a future CNCF webinar and have a great day. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much and uh, everyone uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Yeah, thank you everyone.